we up on the other side. Niggas acting like we tied. I've been gone since like July. Niggas acting like I died. They won't be expecting shit when Capo go to slide. Cause I told them that we put that shit behind us, but I lied. Hey, hey, look who I'm around, man. What up, though? It's the Everything DZ podcast. We're back with another banger video. And today I'm extremely, extremely excited to have my day one, my role dog. That's good. Even in some <laughs> terms, even though she's younger than me, a role model as well. Because to be a good leader, you also got to be a good follower as well. And, you know, one thing about us is we're so close in age. I feel like in our lives, we didn't really recognize how close we were in age because of the roles we had to play early on. And we'll touch on that about like how that was set up. Yeah. But the older I got, the more I realized this twin for real. But without further ado, new to some. Oh, dang, I forgot what the thing is. What? But I ain't gonna cut it. What are they saying? Um, old to some, new to others. I forgot, but ladies and gentlemen, we got my little sister, the GOAT herself, Aria Mason. How does it feel to be here, man? What you been on? Hey, y'all. Uh, first of all, it's your girl, Aria Celeste. If you already know, um, <laughs> make sure to follow me on my, subscribe to my YouTube channel, oh. official Aria Celeste. But yes, um, I'm excited to be here. Um, I've been keeping up on DZ, ooh, everything DZ's, sorry, yeah. he has so many channels and stuff going on, <laughs> but I've been keeping up on his podcast and I really love it. Like I, I've watched so many other interviews and so I'm just happy I can be here now and like, who would have known? Like he was telling me I was up next. So I'm, I'm excited to be here. Yeah. So the <laughs> thing is a lot of people might be shot like, yo, like you had a whole bunch of guys up here. Then they seen a couple of girls come up here. And then, you know, she was probably wondering, like, when she was going to end up up here herself. And I was just like, yo, it's only right to get her up here because there's just so much stuff that she's done in the last six months that she's been on a six-month tear in terms of accomplishments, accolades, and things that you've done that I'm so proud of as a big brother to even say that. But even one thing I like to always tell her on the outside looking in, outside of just our family ties obviously through blood i can honestly look at you and be like yo you're just killing it like you're just killing it so but first and foremost we're gonna i have some phone notes of like questions that i did write down but i don't really i kind of already know what i want to talk about to really motivate oh. the people so for those of you who don't know your background tell us you know where you were born where you're from originally and you know just a little bit about your background Right. So, hey, y'all. So basically, I was born in Detroit, Michigan. Um, grew up with my brother here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, like like he said, best friend right there. Uh, so growing up, basically, our parents, our parents, yeah, put us yeah. like in a bunch of sports. They wanted us to be very active. So growing up, I was very um, active. I was in soccer, tennis, tri volleyball. I was on the swim team. Um, um, you forgot the first one, dance. Oh yeah, dance. Don't forget. Like, did, come on, man. I'm not trying to tell your story. Let them know, man. Come on, man. I'm not trying to tell you your story. More about me than y'all think. Um, so. <laughs> oh, I hope so. Um, I'm the oldest. <laughs> yeah, I'm little sister. So, For but yeah, I was doing a uh, tap dance, jazz, mm -hmm. hip hop. Um, but the one thing that I stuck with that I really fell in love with was tennis. Mm. Um, and actually what most people don't know is we both started tennis together. Yeah, we so, did actually. Yeah. We did. Like, one of us went all the way through with it. Right. The other, uh, the other uh, round, you know, it's, it's more recreational for me, for real. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I wasn't trying to really, you know, first of all, He's good, y'all. Like, yeah. <laughs> don't be fooled. Don't be fooled. This guy is good. Hey, never lost. No, I actually, no, I lost once last year. I had, I told you you'd be proud of me, but I, there was this kid that I played in my gym class. I had to take gym, even though I was a college football player, I still had to take a physical education class, which I thought was stupid because I'm like, yeah. bro, all right. But in the class, I ended up choosing tennis as the tennis class because I was like, bro, I'll go in here, whoop up on people, all this stuff. And everybody was looking at me because I was talking trash. You know me, like I'll be talking. Mm -hmm. So I was like, you know, I'm going to go up in here. I'm going to whip everybody in the class. And there, I'm telling people, like, yo, Doc, don't be shocked. Like, I'm really going to come with it. I was doing curve serves, kick serves, everything. Everybody was just sick. 
and I ran into a kid that used to be the number one in his high school. Mm -hmm. And we actually played out. I ended up losing the match, but I pushed him all the way up to a tiebreaker and everything. Everybody was just sick. And then I actually ended up beating them a couple times too in actual games. So I think I was up like two to two to one in terms of games, two to one in terms of that. But you know what I'm saying? I was just trying to tell people like, yo, like I really do this for real. And I'm up at school. He's calling me while I'm at school. Like, hey, yo, you'd be so proud. I just broke the strings on my racket. I'm like, what? Yeah, I popped the string. Yeah, I popped the strings. I had to get a new racket. Oh my God. She'd be popping the strings for real. But yeah. what I do want to talk about is going back to early childhood, though. What would you say was like, you don't have to touch on everything, but what would you say was like the expectations of us growing up in the household? Because that's one thing that a lot of people don't know is like we have parents that really like they really pushed us hard. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes we'd be like, well, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this might be a little crazy, but we did get a lot of the outcomes that we wanted now because of that early on. I mean, if you ain't never quit something before and come back to it, that's how you don't, that's how you know if you really love it for her. Yeah. So what were like some of the early experiences, you know, even if it's your earlier stories of seeing me go through some things and then also you now being older now, like what were some of those things you can like look back on? Um, definitely growing up, we had, our parents had high, high, high expectations. And because of that, we had to grow up quick. Like yes. I had to grow up quick, quick. And like, especially watching you, yeah. um, going through what you did, like he set the pace. I would say he, David, David definitely set the pace, like for me, um, watching him play football, watching him with his academics. Mm -hmm. um, and it was expected. Like, it was right. expected that we had good grades. It was, it was expected that we did amazing in sports. You know, so yeah. if we messed up, we were already hard on ourselves. Like, yeah, we didn't need, we didn't, we didn't really need our parents to tell us. I mean, they'll yeah. tell us though, but it's just like, I don't we really want you to knew. tell you, we tell us because we already knew what time yeah. it was. I, you know, if I, you know, if I messed up on a test, I wasn't doing so well in, uh, in mm -hmm. school, like back then, yeah. than I am now. Um, but we're we gonna touch on that too. We're gonna touch on that too. Don't yeah, we're gonna touch on that too. But yeah, but I would definitely say, like, I appreciate you giving me that though. You know what I'm saying? One thing I always tried to do is the older brother, and it started when we were young because we were latchkey kids. I don't think you all know what that is. So both of our parents, they was working all the time. So because of that, we were home alone often. You know what I'm saying? And that's not to be like in a bad note because I think it helped us be more independent. Mm -hmm. It helped give us structure. And it, um, that was kind of our guidance and our lesson. So therefore the world was really almost like our playground for real. I mean, a lot of kids these days, I sound young, I sound old as heck trying to say this, but I'm only 22, y'all. But a lot of kids these days, they don't really play outside as much. They don't, you know, they're always on the phone looking at something. And one thing about us is, the world was kind of our oyster. Like we had to learn ideas, a way to stimulate our minds and our senses by like figuring things out. And I mean, for crying out loud, like you was already cooking with the oven. You was like six. You know what I'm saying? Like I was like, I'll use the microwave. I was the king of the microwave. Yeah, you was already on the oven. Not home. Like, yeah, like they, they were both were working busy, hard. working very, very because hard. Because of that, like we knew that we had a job to do. Like, right. you know, if they saw us, if they left us at home, they're like, hey, like this is what y'all got to do. Y'all cleaning up here. Y'all doing this. We want this and that done by yeah. the time we get home. And after go, that, y'all going to go to practice. <laughs> go walk to the uh, go walk to the Farmer Jack because it's not Farmer Jack no more. Yeah. But it's, it's bushes now. But yeah. go walk down to the Farmer Jack. Get y'all some chicken pie pies. Put them in the oven. Aria, you heat up the oven. David used to hit the slit, put the cheese in it. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was already, like, being independent and doing things that a lot of kids, especially Aria, because she was the youngest. That's why, for me, it was so important for me to set a high bar. And I would set the bar high, because not because it was, like, a competition or anything like that, but because I knew that she was capable of going even further. So I was like, I'm going to put this bar up here. And I'm going to be like, all right, sis, go get it. Like, you're going to jump over. You feel me? Like, you're going to surpass. Which she's done an excellent job, which is exactly why she's here. So, going into that academically now, how was it originally growing up academically? Because the one thing about me and you is we started out living in Detroit. Then we made the transition from Detroit to the suburb of Camp, Michigan. So, the style of learning was different. The type of resources we got were different. Racial, 
Um, I would say racial relations were different. Background environments were different. So the attention that you once got in the inner city was way different than when we got it in the suburbs. You know what I'm saying? And that's not to put anything on anybody. But what I'm trying to allude to the fact is, because even when we were living in the city, my mom was teaching, our mom was teaching for um, DPS at the time before she did the charter schools and then later out here. But the thing is, um, a lot of people don't understand is our parents would drive us out to Redford in Livonia to go to those schools because they didn't want us to go to energy schools. So we were originally in a Montessori school. So explain to them a little bit of how that worked and how it shaped you and then doing the transition too. Um, so I would say I was very young, like while this was going on, I yeah. was very young. Um, but how do I say this? Um, I would say I definitely was grateful for ep- every opportunity that I got. Like right. I knew that, you know, we were coming from somewhere. I knew that we were going in a certain direction. Like we wanted yeah. to, <laughs> you know, we wanted to excel. Yeah, whatever we were that excelling. Day. Um, but Definitely with that transition of going from where we were to yeah. the suburbs, I I struggled. Like, I'm not going to yeah, lie. Like, no. this, this guy right here, like, all to the right. moon. Like, no. actually, he was a full <laughs> student. He was doing great, you know. And our parents are like, all right, son, you know, that's expected. And then it comes to me, right. they're like, what's going on? Like, and, and the crazy yeah. thing is, I feel like where you excelled was – more socially than where I excelled more academically because the thing is as, as, as a growing up into a black woman that you are today and me growing up into the black man that I am we kind of went through different kind of um adjustments that were in different ways I can honestly say you had way more friends than I did when we were younger I was definitely more quiet but I knew how to you know finesse and get my grades right. But socially, I did not get the outcomes I wanted to get. Whereas you more so instantly, you didn't necessarily get all the help you could get that was enabled by you. Now, you did have teachers that did help you out and stuff like that. But you didn't get all the assistance that you could have gotten, yeah. especially in our area. And we know that. And, like, going – like, yeah. my, my personal experience was that yeah. – I I was quiet, you right. know. A lot of the teachers they'd be like, "Wow, she's so quiet!" Like, but she listens, she understands. Right. But um, my parents are like, "Oh no!" Like when she gets home, she's loud, she's fun all the time. Right. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. But like during during classes and stuff like that, I was just I was very observant. Um, I like to fully understand things, and if I was lost. I was lost, like, you know, and I would tell them, like, hey, I don't understand. I would look around, you know, like, hey, somebody <laughs> help me, you know. But yeah. but what I found out later on is that, yes, you do have to go out and you do yeah. have to ask for help. Right. Ask for help, people. Um, But at the same time, it does take, like, that one special relationship with your teacher. And you don't get it with all your teachers. No. It's rare. Um, where they will go the extra mile and they will make sure that you're okay at home. You're okay mentally, physically, like, yeah. and you're understanding what's going on in class. But uh, I would say going into the suburbs, I didn't have the best experience with that. Yeah, um, right away, not at all. Yeah, right away, no. Even up through high school too, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And I just want everybody to know before we keep going any further, we're not trying to put nobody on notice. We're not trying to, we're not out of nobody. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But what I will say is, sitting down, these are the opinions and the reflections of what we've been through. And what we've been through has honestly been justified. And not to saying that we've been through the worst of the worst, because I'm definitely not saying that. You know what I'm saying? I'm over here sitting down. I'm not complaining. You know what I'm saying? Neither is she. We're not complaining. We're just telling you some of the obstacles that we had to overcome. And for me, it was more so dealing with bullying. You know what I'm saying? It was dealing with physically and mentally people bullying you and putting you in a box and expecting one thing and then still trying to have the confidence to overcome and tell people like, no, this is what you think I'm supposed to be, but I know that I'm capable of this. Mm -hmm. And for you, it was trying to put you in the box of, oh, she doesn't talk as a black girl. So we're just going to ignore her. Because I'm I'm just going to say hi, everyone. Like I was the, I was the only black girl in my class. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't used to not seeing other people that look like me. And sometimes I questioned right. my own. Right. And the Montessori went to, 
And the Montessori school we went to was very diverse. I mean, we had Mexican. First of all, in Montessori school, you had kindergarten, first grade, and second grade in the same class. I was in class where I was with first, second, and third grader. No, I was yeah. second, third, and fourth because I was, yeah, second, and you was kindergarten, first, second. So we had, like, a mixture of all different ages, Mexicans, yeah. um, Americans, Spanish, like, every single – race you can think of yeah. we've experienced one of your f- best friends growing up was asian your yeah. other friend was like three of them was asian then yeah one of yeah. your best friends that moved away back to germany you yeah. know what i'm saying so we had a very very diverse upbringing but it wasn't to the suburbs where we started figuring out like oh like this diversity you know that's where we started lacking where it went from being oh it's a lot of us to then being oh we're the only yeah. one yeah and, and then yeah there's that there's that feeling that I was getting like when I was younger, I'd be like, you know, I'm the only one. Like, right. yeah. you know, I'm different. You know, right. something yeah. about me that's yeah. different than everyone else. And it took me a while to notice it, but I did. Like, right. you know, and I wish because I did stand out, I kind of wish that I got that extra help. Right. And that and that's the thing. And I feel like, you know, because you remember my situation where mom and dad actually had to like intervene. And I feel like when it came to me, I had was blessed to have a teacher young. I wish she would have had her younger as well but i had a teacher i was just saying that miss timbrook shout out to you if you're out there somewhere but she literally put me in student government and i'm not saying that nobody should get a handout or nothing like that but being the only black kid in the class she gave me a handout she gave me an opportunity to be involved in student government she gave me an opportunity to speak my mind she gave me an opportunity you know, to see Barack Obama when he got elected. You know what I'm saying? He get, She gave me opportunity to see black men doing positive things and right. me being able to speak my mind. I don't necessarily think you got that outside of the home. Or like music. Or, or outside of music or music or sports. Yeah. Places where people deemed it was okay as a black girl to do that. And that's why I wanted to that's another reason why I wanted you on here so bad because I knew so much about your background and seeing how much you've accomplished today. It's like amazing because it's just like where we started from and where you, not even we, but where you specifically started from and how you shined and come through together. It's amazing. You know what I'm saying? And it's truly showing. And I already knew it. Like nobody, like I was looking at my sister's grades and I tell anybody this. Your grades are not a reflection of how smart you are. Your grades are not a reflection of who you are as a person. Your grades are not a reflection of your ranking in society. Your grades or anybody, their outcomes are a reflection of where they've come from. Your outcomes that you get are honestly a reflection of some of the things that you've been through and some of the opportunities you get. I feel like there's a lot of people that are out here that are really, really smart but they're just not put in an environment where they can learn how they need to be taught right. certain things. You know what I mean? Me, I'm a visual person. I see it. I know it. You know what I'm saying? You, you might not be as visual or you are as visual, but you just weren't learning in that way. Yeah. You might be a hands-on person. You might be a person that just likes facts and just needs to hear over and over again. Mm-hmm. Everybody has different ways of learning. And I don't think they took the time with you at an early age to get it. So when you wasn't getting the three point oh's, when you wasn't even getting the two point oh's, you know what I'm saying? No, I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing, but no, no, we go. You know what I'm saying? But when you were getting certain outcomes, I was just like, sis, smart as heck. Like I'm at home, teaching this stuff. You know what I'm saying? You're getting it, but it's just they didn't know how to communicate with you. They didn't know how to. My mom had to tell me like from time to time. Like shout out to my mom because she used to tell me like, "Hey, all right, you're smart." We, you're smart, like in a different way. You just think differently than everyone else. You you don't, you know, some people, they just see it and they get it. Like this guy, he's more logical. And then me, I'm just <laughs> like, I have a huge, I, I had a huge imagination like growing up. And like, right. I just love, I'm very curious. I love to see the world. So like, if I didn't understand something or uh, if it didn't make sense to me, I was just like, this doesn't make sense. And now, as a biology major, I had to learn, like, right. hey, some things are just what they are. Like, right. There's no, yeah. it, it is what it is. Right. You know what I'm saying? And see, that's something that a lot of people don't understand, because it's yeah. crazy even hearing you now, looking at where you've come from academically, mm-hmm. to see you now excelling in biology. But where do you go to school at, though? I go to school at the first HBCU in Maryland, um, Bowie State University. Thank you. So one thing that I want to touch on, is so let's take it back a little bit high school 
let's say, what was it, 10th, 11th grade, you started telling dad you want to be serious about, you know, tennis. Yeah, yeah. So when you initially came to the recruiting process, what was, like, your rank in tennis? Like, what were you known for? Like, you know, you didn't really have a winning record getting recruited. That's what a lot of people don't understand. And the crazy thing is, now that I look about it in high school, I never had a winning record. I think we broke even one year, missed barely missed the playoffs because um, we lost to a team we should have lost Belleville. to. And John Glenn. But oh, John, John Glenn. then we lost to John Glenn. Oh, yeah. Belleville just embarrassed us yeah. my senior year. But John Glenn. John Glenn beat us and we wasn't supposed to lose to them. But it's okay. We, it's whatever. This spring it's whatever. Oh no, nah, dang, bro. <laughs> no, but <laughs> no, but it was just the um but you didn't you wasn't really known for having a winning record in tennis. But the thing is you loved it so much that you still wanted to go after it. So what was the recruiting process like? And you know, talk about the early recruiting. What was that like in general before we get into anything else? Um, early recruiting, I would say it was fun. Um, I did do a lot of traveling. Um, so for those of you that don't know about recruiting, like make sure that you do travel to the places you want to go yeah. to. Send your emails out to people that you're interested in. Show your um, interest um so basically that's what was going on with me and at first I was a little bit like unsure about if I could go about that process because like David said like I didn't have the best record no um, or grades you, like your yeah, grades wasn't grades, even that high yeah my grades weren't I, I wasn't like the I wouldn't say I wasn't like the honor student I was no. like average you were like yeah you were average yeah, you know what I'm saying average academically which is fine um, so I was a little bit worried about that. But one thing about me was, yeah, I love the game. Um, and I was like, hey, like one day I was like, I want to go pro. You know, my dad looked at me like, <laughs> what? all right, you know. Yeah, and the thing is, it was crazy yeah. at the time, too, because yeah. your recruiting process was was crazy. Because I feel like the fact that we're so close in age, you got to experience a lot of things that the average person doesn't really get the experience because – you got a chance. I don't say Aria just has one big brother. Aria has multiple big brothers. She has a big brother that's in the NFL. One of my friends, my boy Michael. She has a big brother that just went Canadian League, Victor. She has a big brother that's, you know, my boy Vashon. Yeah. You know, and, and any of my friends in my friend group, my boy Mason Phillips is out of Alabama. Somebody that she can refer to as a big brother. So she has big brothers that, you know, Freddie. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If he see you on the street, it's, oh, she what up, little sister? Yeah. Like, it's just... My, my sister's been able to have a lot of people that have gone through recruiting. And the funny thing is, she used to say, like, she had the best. Um, what you used to tell me, like, whenever you used to go to visits, you used to be in heaven because you see all the oh fine. Oh, my God. Talk about it. Talk about oh it. Oh, my God. Go ahead. So, Talk basically, about. like you said, I was um, there for his whole recruiting process <laughs> and all his friends' recruiting processes. Right. Um, so, you know, I, I would have, like, the best trips ever, man, like. I would go and I would see him at his football camps. And, you know, I see all them guys running, working hard, grinding, you know. Yeah. And, you know, as a as a girl, you know, growing up, I was like, oh, wow. Like, you know, like this is Hey, I'm cool, just telling you, you know, right now, her, I just get to see it I'm all. telling you all right now, for all the brothers out there, her standards is high. <laughs> I'm telling you all. She didn't see, like I said, she got NFL big brothers. Every level of success yeah, you can think like, of from entry level to the top. Yeah, that's so, her. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, like, I, just I you. did not have, like, really any relationships in high school because everybody, <laughs> my brother was on, my brother was still in high school during that time. Right. So we were, like a yeah, junior. I was two grade. I'm two grades. Old. Yeah, he was like a yeah. junior when I was a freshman. So, yeah. and on the football team, he broke the record on the weightlifting. Weightlifting, you know, he was big. You know, he was big. Dog. Like, DM3, like, right, you know, yeah, that's office. what I was originally known as. DM3. So, yeah. A lot of his friends you know, were guys on the team that I looked up to as well. So I was little sister and <laughs> I was just proud to just be there. And so they were mm. all watching after me. So oh man, just know, I man. never had to, let me tell you something yeah. about Aria. I never had to worry, you know, cause some older brothers would be like, oh man, where my sister at? What's going yeah. on? I never had to worry about Aria because my friend group was so protective of where Aria was it. I remember when I left for college to go to my, my first school of Valparaiso. Yeah. Vershawn sending me pictures with Ari in the hallway. Hey, I went back to go visit uh, 
I went back to go see what little sister doing, walked into the, the uh, bus the and seen him at the dollar store, taking pictures in the dollar Mommy store candy. and bought her candy, you know? So I have people everywhere. They always have my eyes on you. You know what I'm saying? It, it was everywhere. I wasn't doing nothing, y'all. But you know, she wasn't doing nothing anyway, but they always looked out yeah. for her. But because of that, you got to see an early on hand to the recruiting process. Mm -hmm. So what would you tell anybody that is a girl or anybody in general, but specifically black women, young black women that are trying to get into these sports and these avenues about recruiting, how important is it to go take these visits and, and just to see the environment? Because Ooh, I feel like seeing, yes. yeah, talk about it. Talk so about it. let's hit on um, how important it is to like go on the visits, right. go on the visits because um, coaches, they do want to see what you're doing. And sometimes they'll come and see you or you'll go into them. And sometimes you'll play a little bit for them or they'll like, they'll just come to see you play. Right. And let me tell you, um, because I didn't have the best record, one of the coaches saw me play in person and he was like, whoa, like yeah. your record does not tell the full story right. of R.A. Mason. Like no. it does not tell how you play. It doesn't tell. doesn't reflect. It doesn't reflect it at they all. They got to see. Because he saw me and he was like, yeah, what we thought we were going to offer you, we're going to offer twice or more than that. Right. Because... Yeah, because yeah, already it, it would happen. I used to almost laugh because I'm in school at this point, so I'm at the dorm with Valpo, you know what I'm saying, doing my thing, and my dad would tell me, hey, let's say, for instance, they offered Aria $5,000. Mm -hmm. She'd go on a visit, play, next, you know, hey, they want to give Aria 20, 12, five, right, or give her 15000 and every time it was going up, then she started getting gear in the mail, and I'm just like, who is this? Like, who is this? Because, you know, her UTR rating, which is the tennis rating, you know what I'm saying? They were looking at her tennis rating going, oh, she only a two or she only yeah. a three, which is not good. Like, you know, and, yeah, and right. To, to help you guys out with understanding that, um, yeah, USTA is like, um, it's like outside of high school tennis. It's, right. it's like, what? The, the international ranking is international like your internet. Because yeah. tennis isn't like your football or a lot of your other school. I would compare tennis to almost like basketball in a way, except yeah. individual, yeah. because basketball has AAU. Or like even hockey. Or even hockey yeah. even, because hockey is really big out here in Michigan, especially in the suburbs where we yeah. So the one thing about tennis is you can play for your high school, but you can also play amateur, which is your UESTA um, tennis, where you can play matches. All you got to do is just register online. Was there even a registration fee? I think, yeah. I think there is a registration yeah. fee. Yeah. But my thing is, like, you can play in these USTA tournaments and you can just go play against people of your ranking or even higher. And the more matches you win and the more yeah. highly yeah. ranked yeah. opponents you play. Or if you lose to, like, a person with a higher ranking, then your, your ranking will still go up yeah. because you play. It and depends on how bad you lose. Like, if you let get 6-0. Let me tell you, first of all, before y'all go and judge. Right. Uh, <laughs> um... <laughs> I, I, I was late to the USTA game. Yeah. Like, I didn't know until, like, Your my junior year. Junior, junior year. Yeah, you didn't... sophomore uh, summer. Yeah, the like, summer. Yeah, the, the summer, summer right before year, junior year. Yeah. I just started, like, really training and really going for thinking of playing college college tennis. Yeah. So, I didn't know. Um, I was new to the game. I, I was just playing high school. I was like, oh, there's tennis outside of this. Like, yeah. you know, and when you play – Internet, like when you play uh, USTA, you're, you're playing, playing people of all ages, everywhere. You know, and people from everywhere. everywhere. Some people that don't even, some people that are homeschooled and just play tennis, like that's all they do. Yeah, there's one so, girl I ain't gonna say her name. She was ten years old. Ten years old. Don't talk, don't, don't. I mean, but bro, but okay, I mean, she was really good. She was really she good, was and good. I ain't gonna lie. She gave you the business because you got to think about it though. No, but you got to think about this though. No, like on some real talk though. Number one, yeah. tennis isn't a physical combat sport. No. So when you're young, you can play against some of these people. And what I would yeah. say is when you're that young, because I'm not going to lie, you were a gifted child growing up when it came to singing. Mm -hmm. You can look up. I'm not going to tell you to do it, but you can look her up online and you'll probably find old videos of Aria singing at random churches in Detroit mm -hmm. all over. Aria is the Detroit songbird, literally. Every you can't go nowhere in Detroit. I'm telling you right now, you can't go nowhere in Detroit and no, somebody don't know you from singing somewhere. 
I'm telling you, they know you. Or they've seen you somewhere all through the city. Six, seven, eight mile, east side, west side. It don't matter. We've been through every, we've been through the whole city, me playing the drums, mom playing piano. Every weekend we was going to multiple churches, see oh, singing. Yeah. It's what we was doing. You know what I'm saying? And you won national competition singing. You won local competition singing. You're on a singing scholarship now. You know what I'm saying? We're going to touch on that later. But I say that to say this. You were doing it at such a young age. When you're that young, it's kind of the same thing with uh, Mozart. They, te- they train the child to do this stuff young while they're not mentally aware of what they're right. doing. So when you train a child that young at tennis, she didn't know if she was, you know what I'm saying? She was just playing tennis. Tennis was her whole life. She was already homeschooled at the age of 10. You just started taking it seriously at like 15. Yeah, she, yeah. she definitely, honestly... I'm really glad. I mean, yeah, I was I was sad, like, you know, after I lost, you know, because, you know, everyone was laughing. Too, like, yeah, okay, like, we went up to the court, everyone's laughing. Like, but when she won the tournament, who was laughing in? Right. But Nobody. Like, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, like, everybody was the shook. The thing was, like, when we when we first went up to the court, they're like, hey, this is the person you're playing. You know, I looked up. I'm like, okay, you know. And we go to the court. I see this little tiny girl carrying her little ice box, you know, her yeah. little uh, food and cooler, sits on her cooler eating the food. And I'm like, who am I playing on there? Like, right. you're 10 years old. My parents are laughing. Yeah, like, I was laughing. Take this girl to business. You I, was, I was laughing, but I was a little worried. I was, and I'm going to tell you why. Because number one, I already saw well, we her. Saw her practicing. We so, saw her practicing beforehand, and I was local. like, "Are you?" She was like, a local. We saw her practicing, right? And then on top of that, I also seen her UTR, and I was like, "This what? girl was good." And also, Dude, she banging. was playing in a different bracket. Right. She was playing upper bracket. It was like uh, eighteen under. Yeah, eighteen under. And yeah. she was ten. Right. That's what I'm so, like y'all gotta understand. Like, hey, How old was Serena and Venus when they went pro? Fourteen. Fourteen. So y'all gotta understand, like. There's some people that are on that track. But if your goal is to play in college or even to go pro, it doesn't matter when you start. Yeah. It, that's why one of my favorite boxers, Errol Spence, he started boxing in high school. Yeah. And he's undefeated now. It doesn't matter when you, where you start. It's where you yeah. finish. It's just those bumps you got to take on the road. So basically, like, back to the recruiting. Yeah. So going into that, I was new. Like, I was new to playing competitively. I was new to, to just that environment and just – playing USTA and just like what I'd have to go through and like high school and USTA is totally different. It is not the same thing. Like it's not. No. So one thing that I knew for sure, I was like, okay, my sister's UTR isn't the best UTR in the world, but these schools are seeing that Aria has the potential to be the best, like around a lot of people or at least be the number one, number two at, at a lot of these schools. Be honest. Like, yeah. be honest, like at, with yourself, like as an athlete, don't go into it like, oh yeah, I want to play D1. Like if you know that you don't have the best ranking, play where you can play because right. that's the point that really counts. And you literally took the words point. right out of my yeah. mouth too, because during that process, my sister saw me go from a D1 school to a D3. Mm-hmm. So she's even looking at me just like, dang, big bro was like, he was this in high school, yeah. got these awards and accolades, went to a D1 school. It didn't pan out. Yeah. And that's just me being honest. Like, yo, it didn't pan out. I'm not tripping. I ain't sorry. I got a highlight tape at a D3 school. It was great. I had a great time. At the end of the day, like, he wanted to play. I wanted to play. play. My dream was to play. play. I'm not going to go D1 and ride the oak, bro. No. No. We're not doing that. We're going to play. Right. We're going to play. I don't care. (laughs) I don't care if it's in the park. I just want to play. play. You feel me? So (laughs) I just want to play. That was my dream to play in college. You feel me? And I did that. And I got to experience that and travel. And I knew that that's what you wanted to do. And the team you were initially um, signed to was one of the top D2 teams in the nation. They were, yeah. They were were it. And the thing is, Ari had a UTR that was lower than everybody by like a lot, Mm -hmm. except for like one girl, I think. But when you went to their practice, you was balling with the best of them. And the yeah, coach is just like, wait a minute, wait, wait a minute, wait, like wait. this ain't this ain't it. And we made a recruiting video. Yeah, we got a recruiting yeah. video. Yeah, this it's out there. Go check it yeah, out. Go check it out. Just look at like I said, look her up. You'd be surprised what you find. Yeah. Some great stuff. So, with that being said, I was like, you know what? I feel like one of the things I wish I could have done was play for my own people. And I was like, you know what? I don't know if Ariel pick an HBCU because I didn't know what 
she was necessarily looking at all the time because we wasn't talking that much as much because I was doing football and trying to find my way. But I was just like, I just told my dad, I was like, I got my phone with him. I'm like, yo, dad, like, there's a couple of HBCUs. And I know one that I specifically looked at was one of the ones that reached out to me was Bowie State University. But I knew that for football, they were really only recruited in state. Right. But I liked what their school looked like. I saw they were champions, stuff like that. And they had also played against Lincoln University in Pittsburgh. Yeah. I mean, in Pennsylvania, my fault, not Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania, I was also looking at them and they had offered me, but I ended up going the D1 route instead. Mm -hmm. But I still remember them. So we had hit up a couple HBCUs and but we stay hit you back. So just yeah. talk about like how you, you know, decided and why did you like the decision? Um, so I'm not gonna be dramatic, but I was in yoga class <laughs> senior year. That's how and I committed my junior year, but I was in yoga class senior year. We're doing this exercise with like a random person in our class, you know, we're stretching and stuff, but and our um our uh sorry, there's something in my eye, but yeah. um, <laughs> our teacher asked us to um she's big on meditating and she asked us to like discuss where we are in life um or where we're choosing to go in life and why as mm. to why and she talked about how she was like a softball player and she wanted to go to eastern michigan or something like that and it was between that or a different school and she was like but i decided to go this route because i knew there was more to me i knew there was more opportunities and i wanted to do this as well and you know, Bowie had already come up, and I was right. like... Because you had a couple okay. of different HBCUs, too. Yeah, I yeah. had a couple of different schools, but Bowie, I visited Bowie. Right, um, visited. And that one really stood out to me um, in Maryland. Yeah. Uh, so um, that one really stood out to me. And after listening to her talk about that experience, I was like, you know what? There's more to me than just tennis. Mm. Like... Uh, I knew that if I went to that other school, I would just be doing tennis. Like, I it would was, just be, and yeah. in, you know, just involved in tennis. Like, that'd be it. But I knew that, hey, I'm a singer and songwriter. I, I love music. I love to sing. I've been singing competitively all my life. Yeah, since um, you were, like, literally, like, Yeah, three. since I could talk. So, <laughs> yeah, like, no, so, no, um, no cap. That's, that hmm. was a huge part of my life. I knew that I also wanted to work in the, med in the medical field. Mm-hmm. And I wanted the best opportunity possible for those dreams I had and goals I had. Even though so, technically looking at your high school record, yeah, everybody would have probably advised you to go the other route. Yeah. Everybody. Like, like, except me. I, I was like, she like, do it. Like, the, big thing like, was that, the big thing was that the decision was made. Mm -hmm. Like I already committed. People don't. You know, you don't really people, see, I, you know, people were comfortable. I was a little, oh, like it was signed. You signed the letter of intent and everything. Signed, so the picture's still up <laughs> in the uh, house. Yeah. So yeah. It, it was a big deal. Um, But you know what? I changed my mind because I was like, you know what? If I go to this school, I know I'm going to have a different community. And, yeah. and also uh, HBCUs weren't really a talk of the day um, where we went to school. Not in our area. They didn't yeah, really. people weren't really, our teachers, you know, they weren't really talking to us about, oh, yeah, you can go to an HBCU. It was more like, you know, growing up, we looked at, oh, we're going to Michigan. We're going to Ohio State. We're right. That's what we really, well, and that's where your big brothers went. Central Michigan. You know, that's where your big brothers went, Ohio State. That's what we looked Eastern at. Eastern Michigan. That's where, you know, <laughs> yeah. that's where our kind neighbors were going. Right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but, uh you know, once uh, once we we did, how do I how do I yeah? So I heard about Bowie. Yeah, I had told her. Yeah, to my brother. And then after that, I looked at the school. I looked at the history. Mm -hmm. I looked at whoa, like I never I never heard of something like this before. Like this is so cool. Like I get to be around my people. Like um, I get to get taught by my people because right. going to a uh our our school, you know, you didn't really see. You didn't really see a black woman teaching uh, no. or a black man teaching no. <laughs> um, a lot in the in the areas that I was in, right. interested in, like the science field, the right. medical field, that area. So I was like, you know what? Like, I want this. Like, this yeah. is what I want to do. And I, I asked my mom. I was like, is it too late? You know? Like, yeah, I remember you asked mom first because you knew dad was going to be ticked. I, I you knew he was mom, like, what? We just did like, it. We just signed. We did it. And even though I signed, my mom might hold and this. The, cra know, the crazy thing about it, you signed on early. Was a goat man. Yeah, was. You signed on early. A hey, she signed on early signing day. I did. So um, you know, like if somebody signed, I would say 
if y'all remember, um, um, what's his name? He just signed uh, Hunter, uh, uh, what's Travis Hunter? They just signed with Jackson State. Aria was the original Travis Hunter in our area where basically he was committed to Florida State, decommits on the next signing day and decides to say, I'm going to HBCU, Jackson State. Aria was the first person I've ever seen go, you know what? I could go to this Division II school that's won championships, was about to win one the year before prior, had all the gear, had everything, and said, you know what? I'm going to Bowie State University. Hey, that was so legendary. And you were signed and everything. And I just remember having conversations with you. And I'm not going to get into what I went through because this is your podcast. This is about you. But I just remember reflecting on a lot of the stuff I went through. And I was like, look, I'm going to set, like I said, our whole thing is I'll set the bar. She going to pass it. You feel me? Like, and I don't, I don't feel any type of, you know, whenever I already do something better than me or get more awards than me. I don't feel any type of way about it because that's what she's it's, supposed it's to do. That's tough. like our expectation. Like, it's I always go like, hey. We want to see the best in each other. So it's right. never like, it's never like, oh my God, like, I hate you. Like, no, no, <laughs> no. And we might joke about it sometimes. But, yeah. see you do good. No, we want to see each do other do good. You, so, right. Right. right, exactly. And if I have to take, and if I have to take the bullet first, I'm going to make sure she's not going to take the same bullet. You might get one of us. You ain't getting both. Period. You ain't getting both. You feel me? Like, you ain't getting... You know what I'm saying? You ain't you ain't getting both of us. You might hit me first, but guess what? I, I'll be that. You know what I'm saying? What he's trying to say is that right. I saw what he went through, right? Um, in his college experience, and I saw right. why he switched schools, right? So because I saw that going, you know, growing up, <laughs> I looked at him and I was like, "Listen, you know, my brother told me before I even made my decision. He was like, hey, like, make sure that when you go to this place, you're gonna be okay. Like, yeah. you're gonna be okay mentally." You're going to be in a good environment and yes. you're going to be taken care of. Yeah. So, and, and don't think about it in one aspect yeah. because I was just thinking to myself out loud, like one of the schools I was about to commit to when I was transferring, um, one of the schools I went over to that I was about to transfer to, their whole program got canceled. Right. I'm not going to speak on no names, but one of the schools I was looking at that my mom wanted me to go to, yeah. um, they like terminated football completely and I was thinking to myself and I was just like okay sis so you know um what kind of like what kind of like could you go to a school and if tennis got taken away could you still stay at that school because your life is bigger than just sports right and for that specific school heck you know right no no but no. this woman now and actually, I did. We might go into We're going to go into that. We're going to go into that next. Like stop playing for a bit. But going to the school that I go to now, like if tennis was gone, I would still love the school and right. I would still want to be there. So. Exactly. And, and going into that, so yeah. a lot of people don't know, because she did do that on signing day. Now, I will tell you guys this. Yeah, we're going to get into it, but we're going to talk about both because there's two things that happen yeah, to you. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, remember the NCAA came <laughs> knocking on that door. So one thing we're going to talk about, yeah, you try to forget about it, but we're going to talk about it. So one thing I want all my sisters to know out there is the HBCUs, they there. And my brother's out there. The HBCUs, they're there. And a lot of people try to talk down on them because at the end of the day, college is a business. So everybody's trying to tap into that business of education. I think it's messed up that education is now turning into a business because it should just be focused yeah. on the education and the bettering of our people. Yeah. But unfortunately, it has become a business. But I feel like the most organic place in history for black people to learn was at HBCUs originally. And I felt that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I ain't going to lie, being at certain schools and stuff like that, when I started doing well, I got a lot of hatred, not from my own peers necessarily, but from, you feel me? So what we, you know what I'm saying, was understanding how to be explained. So, and you got a lot of eyes on you. You was in a lot of rooms of people that didn't look like you. And it was a lot. And I felt like my sister never got that support. So I wanted her to feel like she could be around her own people and get that support. Now, obviously, you're not going to get support from everybody. No. Obviously. But one thing that I did know about HBC opportunity. And when she signed, the NCAA came and said, hey, because Aria did sign and that's a letter of intent, she has to basically be suspended 
for like a week. Was it a week? Yeah. She was suspended for like, like one she match. missed one match, her first match of college. Yeah. But then what happened when the second match came? Um. So yeah, uh, big whoop. <laughs> big whoop. <laughs> uh, yeah, second match came finally. <laughs> I was really lit, excited for it. Um, and COVID happened. Um, next, you know, we're all getting the announcement like, hey, y'all got to move out your dorms. Y'all got to go back home. Right. So <laughs> all of that tennis, like. That was canceled. Like, yeah. tennis was canceled for a year and a half. I'm a junior now. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because so, you yeah. didn't, Aria, one thing you guys don't know about Aria is now, Aria is a multifaceted, talented person. So, like I said, if I had to say what Aria is born to do, I'll say sing. Period. Everybody growing up in I Detroit knows that. Like, <laughs> like, everybody in our area knows that. You know what I'm saying? Competitions nationally. You know, locally, she does that. That's what she does. You got, I got one blue and a red in band for um, MSBOA. You got two blues. Two blues means first place in solo and ensemble. She got two blues. I got a blue in solo, and then I got a red in ensemble. She got two blues. And I only did it once. And she only did it once. I did it twice. You know what I'm saying? So she only did it. She was a one and done. She went in, won all the awards and left and bounced. That's already it. She going to come in. Win your awards and leave, and you're just gonna be shook. Like, what just happened? I mean, after all, like, my name is Aria, it means beautiful, beautiful song. song. So, I mean, like, like, it just wasn't it's what gonna it's in the name. Guys, like, when y'all see me up there one day, just know, like, hey, it was meant to be. It was meant to be. You heard it here first, but like <laughs> I said, like, that was the thing about Aria is like, yeah. you know, so she's so multifaceted and talented, and your GPA at your school, you started through the roof. Your GPA uh, was what, uh, and she, uh, <laughs> like I said, if you gotta ask who the who the academically best student was in the household now, it's you. He right. So, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> See, like, you about to start fighting up here and scrap mess the whole setup, man. Like, but no, but it's, it's true though. Like, you have the best. You have way better grades than I did in school because grades, because of my environment, it's not that I didn't get the help I needed with certain professors still like that in my previous school, which is fine. Yeah. It's okay. I'm not going to be, because it's on you at the end of the day to do your work. It is on you, but I was trying no to do way, a lot. Guys. Do the work. I understand. Nobody wants to do it. Nobody wants to do it, and nobody's going to do it for you, neither. Unless. I mean, there's ways you can do that, no, but I'm like, <laughs> bro, hey, chill. We're not going to put my, a. Hey, hey. All I'm going to say is dudes had, we had to eat, bro. We had to get money. <laughs> I'm graduating now. It's over. They can't get me. I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about. Hey, chill, bro. We ain't talking about that neither, bro. Chill, chill, chill. That's under the table, bro. We ain't... Right. Come on. <laughs> That's the thing. But to do the work, you know what I'm saying? You know, do, do the work how you can do the work. But you get it done. It's a business. All right. But hey, you feel me? But the thing is, like, you know, I didn't get off to the best start in college. It was the first time I ever struggled academically. Well, he went to the freaking uh, top 13 engineering school in the world. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm a nerd. So, yeah, you know, but. I like you know what I mean, like, the kind only of thing I trust is my calculator. Error. No, but uh, <laughs> the difference is, I don't know if you guys get these from your school, but from my HBCU, uh, <laughs> coming in. My freshman year, you know, our professor in the science department, he said, uh, he said, like, hey, like, we don't want to see you guys fail. They they did not. They told us that you guys are not going to fail. You guys are going to succeed. I never, and heard, I never heard that. In my I life. never had a teacher I tell me you're it. not going to. If, let me tell you something. I got Steph Curry on the test before you. If you don't know what listen, that is. That means 30 percent. They started basically coming into their. The message that I got was, "Hey, if you fail, like it's because it's on you. You you didn't you, put the you, work. In. You didn't do the work. You didn't, you didn't do up. enough. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, HBCUs, my HBCU, does not want you to fail. Right. They don't want you to fail. They want to see their own people do well. So, right. you know what I'm saying? And that, and I ain't gonna lie, like yeah. that's a feeling I never got. I've never had a teacher tell me you're not gonna fail. It was, hey, yeah. if you fail, like it is what it. Is. Like I said, I got a 30% I'm on the I'm not team. saying it's easy, but I'm no. saying you have people that care about you mentally 
the resources are more openly talked about. Yeah, they care about how you're doing as a person, and they want to know you the more than just the student. They want to know you outside of that as well. So I've had some teachers show up at, like, my matches. I've seen some of them at the basketball games. Yeah. Um, Some of them in Greek life. So Yeah, that's one thing. That's one thing I can say, honestly, going more of the PWI world. I can honestly say, for me, I had to go look for that. Now, I have... Two teachers specifically, I'm not going to say their name on here because I don't know if they wouldn't be mentioned, but I have two teachers specifically that were also my counselors as well. They are my advisors, but they are also teachers as well because some of them, a lot of the advisors are also teachers at a lot of schools. But I had two advisors that went to bat for me specifically to help me get the job that I got now. But like I said, it was two. I'm not saying you're not going to get that experience at other schools. Right. But I'm saying, like, the the model for the whole entire university is that everyone succeeds. Mm -hmm. Everyone Mm -hmm. does well. And if you don't do well, they're going to make sure you do well. And if you you fail, I mean, it's on you to push yourself. It's on you. You got to really, like, try to, like, and it's not that the work isn't hard. Yeah. Because, no, she be pulling all-nighters, all that. The work, I don't want people to say, oh, HBCUs must be easier than PWIs because a teacher said you're not going to know. Yeah. The work is hard, but it's more of a group concerted effort. Like, everybody's We're working all trying to win. To win. You know what everybody's all trying, trying to win. win. They're not yeah. putting people against each other. Yeah. They're not doing none of that. They're saying, hey, we're all trying to win here. Let's get this together. And that's yeah. why. I you love visiting your school so yeah. much because you really feel that. You really feel that. Yeah. Like, I even shoot. had one of the football coaches show up at my match. Yeah, shout so, out to him. Was, you know what I'm saying? I, and I was there. I can verify this. I was yeah. like, what is the head football coach doing at your match? And then I was like, yo, I still got a year of eligibility, so I go talk to him. I was... <laughs> Well, he had Morgan now. Well, yeah, he had Morgan State now. But shout out to him, though, because that was real. He didn't – you don't have – football coaches are super busy. A lot of these people are super busy. So for them to take the time out of their day to just yeah. do that and be that support system just because he bonded over – he bonded with you over what? Um, over tennis and even uh, also too, like I got to have a conversation with him and we talked about my brother. <laughs> like, And yeah. he saw me in the gym and he was like, hey, like you're brave, like – you know, he was like, you know, where are you from? I'm like, oh, I'm from Detroit. He's like, you're from Detroit and you're in Maryland, like for tennis. Like, what yeah. you're doing this by yourself? You got yeah. no relatives here. Like, you're brave. Yeah, yeah. Um, and like, I just have a lot of respect for him. So yeah, yeah, no yeah, he doubt. He definitely saw me in the uh the little was it the hidden ballrooms or whatever. Yeah, yeah, the uh, uh racquetball, racquetball. Partner, racquetball. Grinding. He was your racquetball partner. Wasn't yeah, y'all told us to play racquetball? No, he, he definitely wanted to play racquetball. Yeah, so, yeah. maybe one day. <laughs> yeah, but but that's the kind of thing that, you know, at a school like that, it's cool to see black men and black women feel comfortable enough to conversate and come together for common goals or just making their communities of school better. Because you really don't see that often in a lot of other places and in society, in media, it, it's not highlighted and emphasized. So that's why interviewing you is just kind of like, it's so cool because I can talk to somebody about this in my own household where it's like, yo, sis, like, what are y'all doing here? Like, what could I take that you're doing at your HBCU and apply to my own life when it talks to seeing my fellow sisters at these high-ranking networking meetings? Because I don't want to toot my own horn or anything like that. I'm not going to get on me about what I do. But when I go to certain networking events in my job, how can I communicate with my fellow sisters? How can I make them feel welcome? When I see my brothers, instead of you know looking them up and down and giving them a stiff eye, going up to them and shaking their hand, figuring out where they at. And, and I don't know flirtatious, nothing like that. It's just, hey, I see you. I see you. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I see, see you. At HBCU, you'll meet some like brothers. Yeah. And you'll meet some sisters. And yeah. You'll realize like, hey, like, it's we're here. We're both. Family. We're all here. We all can be in the door. We can all get to the door. So back on your sports route. So my sister is a freshman. And because of NCAA eligibility restrictions, you know, from the signing day. And on top of that, due to COVID, you weren't on a team. But she was multifaceted enough to get scholarships for academics. You got scholarships for your music. You're in the gospel choir where you guys have done the Washington Wizards. BSUGC. Yep. You, uh, you do, so you've done the Washington Wizards. What else have you done? Yeah, we also were on the Steve Harvey show. You're on the Steve Harvey show. What else? Um, and like basically we tried. Well, if you don't talk about you, where else did you? What oh, else? Oh yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you gotta remind. What? You know, because <laughs> you feel me. I'm the same way. She be reminding me what I did. Um, like where did you see man? I sung for the Washington um football team. Formerly known as formerly known as the. I think it was my 
freshman year? Yeah, yeah, your freshman year, you were already singing for an NFL team for the yeah. national anthem. Yeah, so they're what were they called? Like the they were formerly the Redskins, but now yeah, Washington so football team, to be more correct. Um, yeah, so I got to represent my choir and the school doing that, and also I sing at uh, Professor Ring. The um, she's a professor of the gospel choir at Bowie State. She's given me tons of opportunities where I could sing at our convocations. Um, which have been so much fun, like even just being there with everyone, seeing the new freshmen come in, seeing the seniors go out. So it's just been really cool. Yeah, A yeah, lot yeah. of cool opportunities. Exactly. So it's yeah. been super cool seeing those opportunities for her. And then on top of that, you're vice president? Of I'm vice president of our gospel choir. I started out as our, uh, what was it? The historian. Right. So I was moving my way up. Um, I just, honestly, I love music. So right. like I said earlier, you know, you want to be able to do other opportunities at different schools you go to. When I didn't have tennis going on, um, I was still training and everything, but I also was able to be in our gospel choir. And I was also able to join other organizations on campus. Yeah, uh, like, like, like SAC. You did so, SAC. So um, student athlete. Student athlete advisory. Council. Student. Student. Oh, God. Student advisor. Student athlete advisory council. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Student. Athlete, but basically SAC. It's, it's basically what is SAC? Committee. Right, yeah. committee. Student Athlete Advisory Committee. My bad, guys. Right, and <laughs> you were on that for your school during a time yeah. when tennis wasn't even happening. Yeah. So yeah. tell us about that. Like, what did um, you do with SAC? So the reason I joined SAC was because I wanted to feel like I was still a student athlete, guys. Because <laughs> I wasn't playing tennis. <laughs> I, I didn't get to have the season. So I was like, dang, like, how's one way I can, Ooh. like, still feel like an athlete other than just training? You know, nobody... And nobody really knew that we had a tennis team on campus. So I was like, you know what? As a representative, um, my coach told me about it. And he's like, hey, you know, we want somebody to join. I represented the team and I joined SAC. So basically um, in that organization, it was like a bunch of representatives from all the sports on campus. We all came together as a family, as friends. Mm -hmm. And we would hold events for like all of our athletes. Like we would hold events about mental health, mental health mm -hmm. um, and awareness. We would hold events where we would talk about like, hey, what's going on? Like, you know, with COVID and everything, like, is everyone okay mentally? And we still wanted to make everyone feel like, hey, we're still student athletes, right? you know, right. and it's okay that if we feel a little, you know, sad, if we don't feel like we're athletes anymore, we were encouraging each other, like, hey, still stay healthy, still train. Um, so it, it really helped me out mentally, like yeah. during that time. And, um, I was, it actually really made me like, feel like an athlete, even though like I had no season to look up to at that time. So it was just a lot of fun. And also to connect with all of our different athletes. Like mm -hmm. I was friends with people on the bowling team, football team, uh, volleyball track. team, track and field. Yeah. Um, so it was really cool that I just got to meet everyone and they're like, oh my gosh, there's a tennis team. Like what? Like right. we didn't even so, know. So, yeah. so the cool thing is, so now you're bringing attention to a tennis team. Yeah. Then on top of that, so you're in SAC representative, specifically in SAC, you did social media, right? Yeah. So you this ran the social media, media yeah. ran social media. You're the vice president of your gospel choir. Then what else did you end up getting into? Cause you did a lot. Um, you did a lot. <laughs> like you did yeah. a lot. So, uh, still biology majors decide to stick yeah. with it. One thing about me, I changed my majors. Yeah, you stuck with I'll it. I'll tell you what, they will try to scare you out of it. Like, yeah. like, hey, like, if you're not really gonna fully commit, don't do it. Like, right. you know, don't don't do it. So, um, I stuck with it. You know, after sophomore year, I was like, let me stick with uh, you know, biology. I want to be pre med, and I'm going into med into med med medical school <laughs> yeah. coming up. Yeah. <laughs> so, um. Yeah. yeah, I I joined uh, the gospel choir. Yeah. I did that and what tell them about uh, your your the, uh, fraternity sorority one the award the duck. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. So um also um this year um I was um inducted into the chapter of Chi Alpha Sigma, right. um, Alpha which Sigma. is the student athlete um honor society for college athletes um that are on the honor roll and that are doing well in school. So that was really cool um, this year that happened. Uh, and also um, in SAC, after my first year, I moved my way up into being, I did run like for being somewhere on the e-board, but I ended up getting social media. And I actually didn't realize how much I was gonna like it. Like at right. first I was like, ah, you know, but I wanted to be involved. And 
the big picture was that I wanted to show notoriety of our tennis team. Like yes. Our school, my professors did not know that there was a tennis team. And um because because be honest, yeah. what what was what is your school known for? Our school is known for our football team, and uh three P champs, our bowling team, five yep. P champs, and our basketball. Um, basketball team. That's what they're so, known for. Yeah, so known for tennis, you guys by nature, like a lot of sports, yeah, we and, and this is for any sport. This is not to be at boy, nothing like that. But specifically at schools, your football team and your basketball team are yeah. gonna be your biggest oh, yeah. drivers, especially, especially at HBCUs. As HBCUs yeah. and you know, because they are by nature under not as funded as PWIs. But they're funded. There's money. I, I don't want people to think HBCUs are broke. That is a myth. There is money. They're constantly doing stuff at your school. Yeah. There's always a new always building, building, always a new dorm. Things are getting updated. So I hate when people say, that's like my biggest pet peeve, like when people say that HBCUs yeah. are underfunded. That is a myth. There is money to be made. There's money in these communities. Just because they are more private does not mean that there's money out there. And the experience is just worth yeah. more than anything. So. Exactly. So the experience... Yeah. You'll be mad about no AC one semester, but then you get a dorm with AC and you get the experience and the love from your own people Even in the if you culture. you don't got the AC, like, you're going to make family. Like, right. Like, who cares about AC when you got fun. family network, <laughs> you know, everything, yeah. the culture, the life. That's the most important part. Yeah. You're not even going to think about that. The aid that you guys get, the help that you guys get. The um, Steve Harvey. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the oh, award. Who else? We met that one. You met um 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 yeah, what's his name? A man that was in power that played uh oh my gosh. Oh what's my gosh. I'm gonna have to look him up. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Power. Uh, oh, also we had what's her name? Lil Mama come to our school. We had uh Cash Dog come to our school. Ro Timmy. Um, yeah, Ro Timmy. Ro Timmy. Yeah. If y'all don't know, he played Dre yeah. in I, Power. I don't know if y'all can see like everything. So. The lights kind of off. Y'all can't see him. But Ro Timmy came to the school. You know what I'm saying? You guys got all kind of, and like I said, you did all these different things, man. So, and also, you were elect, you were captain of your tennis team this past year. I was one of the captains. And what, what, and what, what did you guys accomplish? Uh, we, this year, uh, in 23 years. First time. <laughs> first time in 23 years, we were the Northern Division champion. Right. First time ever. Ever. First time you guys yeah, won a division ever. ever. So, yeah, so yeah. you know, but to, the big deal was like in sec, I wanted to make sure that our tennis team was known. Like right. I, I made sure I was at every event. Like yeah. I was at every event because I was like, Hey, I'm Ari Mason. I'm on the tennis team. Like I wanted people to know, um, because I absolutely love my team. Like, because be honest, was, did you feel like there was a threat that tennis could have been taken away? Because I, I think a lot of times. So, there was. A lot of people don't know that there's a lot of schools that cut programs because COVID, COVID yeah. didn't allow, you know, without a football season. And this is going to be money talk here. Accountant. So got to talk about money. You know what I'm saying? Trust my calculator. <laughs> a lot of these schools, because they had to have limited football seasons or no football seasons, especially smaller schools, mm -hmm. and then no basketball seasons, the basketball games canceled in winter sport. Those sports fund all the other sports at the, at mm -hmm. the schools. They're bringing, in, They're bringing right? in the money to be able to fund y'all sports, which yeah. is just how it is. You guys got commentators, fans, stuff like that. There's not many fans that pay. Do people even pay to go to y'all matches? You can really just walk up. That is um, a secret. Like right, right. You know what I'm saying? So you can really just show up. You know what I'm saying? But that's yeah. the thing. Just show up, support. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. donate. I don't know where they can donate, but figure that out. Yeah. Yeah. Right. But my thing is this. You know, when it comes to these organizations, these other organizations, without the big money drivers, these schools can't afford to have these other mm -hmm. sports seasons. So you saw a lot of schools get canceled. And that I felt that scary. there was a very yeah. real possibility that that, that could have happened. Uh, yeah, going. Because one of the schools in your league. Yeah, one of the one schools of the, that was in your league. Yeah, going into my um, junior year, one of the, um, yeah, one of the like schools. sophomore year, yeah. One of the schools that was in our division, I mean, in our league, yeah, got. They got their cut. Program their got program got taken got away. Taken we, away saw a lot of, we saw a lot of tennis teams. Getting their teams taken away, um, even different sports, getting their mm -hmm. teams cut. So I was very worried, especially knowing that, you know, hey, we don't really get all of that, all the stuff that we need. Um, knowing that we weren't really that known, that well known, right. people didn't really know about it. So, you know, it wouldn't be like a hard, you know, people would be like, oh, we don't really know them. We don't really need them. So, right. um, it could so have been really that. easy to be like, oh, we don't even know the tennis yeah, team. They never so, won. Uh, 
And that's just, why, like, yeah. that's why during that time, I felt like it was like, like my calling. Like, I felt mm. like, hey, like it's my responsibility as a member of this team to like make sure that our we team can have is a known yeah. and make sure that we can have a season. And um, I, I had some big sisters that I looked up to on the team that were like, hey, like everything's gonna be okay. Like, you got this. Keep training. We got you. And like, they were really the ones that pushed me, like to like, hey. I, I found out that, hey, they love this team just as my, much as I do. Yeah. And because yeah. I had that opportunity, I was like, hey, I'm going to go out and do this for us. And I'm going to go out and make sure that we have a season. I'm going to go out and make sure that um, that we're known, that right. they know that we're here and, and that we're important and that we matter too. And, <laughs> so, and not only did y'all have yeah. a season, but y'all won the division yeah, for the first game. time ever. But guess what? Are you satisfied, though? I'm not satisfied. Good. But you know what? Um, I do feel like I do feel like I was definitely meant to be at Bowie yeah. because of like the experiences I've had. I felt yeah. like, hey, like I was meant to be like here, like doggone it. Like we we won the we won the uh, division championship. Like so I'm like, we're we're so, I'm supposed to be here. Like this right. I feel like that wouldn't have happened, that opportunity wouldn't have happened anywhere else. Right. And and yeah. the cool thing about it is as a as a big brother, like you see somebody come out of their shell. And I feel like this process specifically allowed me to not just see a little sister, but to see a young woman turn into an adult, like right in front of my eyes. Like I'm seeing Aria, I'm going to this meeting today to talk about the problems with this tennis team. I'm I, I talking about the tennis team. I'm here talking about our uniforms. I'm meeting with this person to talk about our budget. I'm meeting with this person to talk about a schedule. I'm meeting with this person to talk about how come we ain't all got the same uniforms, the same outfits, and we look like we're all in congruency. Yeah. You know, making us look yeah. like a team, making sure that we got proper um, um, access to the weight room, making sure... And when y'all wasn't at the weight room, you had everybody on the team at Planet Fitness with a membership. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, there was things that I saw you do where I was just like, "Yeah, she's and not just a little sister during, no more. She's yeah. becoming a leader. And, like, during COVID, I'm like, like all, I'm sure all athletes can like, yeah. vouch for me when I say that it was hard to stay motivated. Like, yes. without a season going on, you had to know that there was a bigger picture. You had to know that you were going towards something or else – yeah, you were gonna just drop. Yeah, I mean, and if you, I ain't gonna lie, if you were an athlete and you never thought about dropping during COVID, shout out to you. <laughs> but I know I thought about it. I remember one time I was at the track. I seen two of my friends at the field, and they're like, "David, you gonna play one more year?" Because I had, you know, my fifth year option, and I was just like, "Man, my career over with." I remember telling them my career was over with. So glad I came back for my last season, bought out. You know what I'm saying? I had a great year, made a name for myself, put a stamp on it, yeah. left out. Like you had to keep working. But out you had to keep you working. You didn't know that if you were going to have an, like, another season. We over here having Zoom workouts so, with my football team. Yeah, like, and I was I was planning workouts. I was, uh, yeah. I was doing little practices that my team could show up to because during that time, also, I didn't even get to meet everyone on the team yet. So, like, they're showing up at my little practices. You know, and I'm like, oh, hey, nice to meet you. Like, I might be playing with you next year. Like, helping you know, your coach so, organize everybody's yeah, schedule. So like, there's a lot of just, stuff. It was just, um, it was definitely a calling. Like, yeah. It was definitely and, and, a calling. and the cool thing is about it, I feel like you took it on and you weren't, it's like, this is how I knew you were meant for it because you took it on and you did it without being like nervous. It was almost like it just came natural, just like boom. So that's why when you were made captain, I wasn't surprised. Yeah, I wasn't surprised because there was so much stuff that you did to even make sure that there was a season. I was just like, shoot, yeah. this is a leader right here. And you didn't do it for yourself. No, you didn't do it for yourself. You wanted this the opportunity for everybody to play because yeah. you knew what it felt like to not be able it. to not I have knew what it felt like to not have anything. I feel like that's what drove you. You, I felt, you knew. I, yeah. I knew what it was like to not have anything, to not be able to go on the tennis court, to not be able to go on campus, to not be able to <laughs> be able to play a play one match. Right. You know, <laughs> you get know that taken saying? away just from uh, just deciding like, yo, yeah, this so I don't think this is where I want to be. I was definitely determined. I was very driven and I'm still driven because yeah, the work my ain't job finished. at Bowie still isn't done. It's you know? not finished. Got, I got one more season left senior year. So we'll see what's up next. You know? Yeah. Yeah. We'll see. So yeah. as so Getting into what's next, though, I want to wrap it up. We can't cover everything there's about – There's a lot. There's so <laughs> many layers to us. Like, yeah. it's a lot of stuff to unfold. But one thing I do want to ask is, how do you think all of these experiences that we just talked about from early age not getting the attention that you thought that you needed um, to be successful in the classroom to being in, in 
I guess I can say being in my shadow at one point in time, yeah. you know, feeling like, yo, like, you know, my brother's getting all this attention for this, this, and this of sports in the media, in the newspapers, in these clippings and stuff like that, because that was very real. Yeah. Getting that attention and being the one to be like, oh, you're David's little sister. Like, what are you going to do in class? Like, your honest. brother is an honor student. Like, honest. you know what I'm saying? <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. But, but it's real. Like, but it's, yeah. it was, uh, I'm not going to lie. It was a pretty big bar. You know what I'm saying? And for you to overcome that and be going through all those things, then signing to your school, figuring out that you weren't able to play your first match, getting deemed ineligible. Then right after you get deemed ineligible, not being able to play at all from COVID yeah. and going through all those things that you've talked about. How do you think that has shaped you into the young woman you are today, making these big decisions, getting the internships that you've gotten now? Because she's got internships you know, coming up, that's huge opportunities that we ain't going to speak on yet until it happens, you know, everything get done with the paperwork, but <laughs> she's got some big stuff that she's doing that's way big, and I thought I did great, so, like, yo, it's just amazing seeing some of the things that you're doing now, but how do you think that has shaped you in terms of, like, my biggest thing on our podcast is talking about overcoming and being resilient, mm -hmm. so how do you think those things shaped you to have that resilient mindset, and did it come naturally? Ooh. Um, so, it's a loaded question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I will say overall, I was humble. Mm. Um, I was very humble. Um, being in my brother's shadow growing up, I didn't even <laughs> think of it that way. Like, I just knew I always had faith that, like, hey, my time is coming. Me right. and my brother, we always knew that, like, we all had our own time. Yeah. And yeah. we were gonna be proud of each other, like, for whenever our time was, right. whenever our time was coming. Um, and being not not being able to play like and where I was coming from I was very humble I, I was never big on like um telling people like hey I got this going on I got that going on I was just like yeah. okay you know my time's coming and when it comes it's gonna be great you know yeah people yeah. are gonna know about it they know um, <laughs> <laughs> you know but like that's no, just how really. we were raised to be yeah. honest and and because of that I always knew that I had more to do like mm. no matter what Mm. I knew that there was a bigger purpose. I knew that um, I knew that I was working towards something bigger, bigger than myself. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, yeah. Like especially with my team, my tennis team. I knew that it was bigger than me. Right. Um, and I, I feel yeah. like I feel like honestly, you don't really get motivated until you have a deeper yeah. meaning. Anyway, yeah. I feel like it that's was, what really drives people. If you have a bigger, and it was never easy for me, like. Right. Uh, if, like going back to like when we we're talking about my schooling, um, how I was doing in school, like nothing ever came easy. Coming out of David's shadow was never, <laughs> no. you know what I'm saying? He Shoot. set the bar super high. Yeah. Um, so nothing was ever easy for me, but I, growing up, what I realized was, hey, like if I work super hard watching him work and yeah. watching my parents work, if I work super hard, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get there. And that's the reason why I continuously work and try to beat myself like yeah i'm my own competition yeah you know what i'm saying yeah. i want to be better than whatever i did the year before thank you um took the so, words right out of my mouth took yeah, the words right out of my so, mouth man for real just look yourself in the mirror and whatever you did top it you mm. know what i'm saying and do better than that because the sky's the limit and um i'm just gonna keep going from there and yeah. and you know that was that answer right there is it's really cool for me hearing that because like I always like tell it to you like religiously even when she's tired you know what I'm saying and <laughs> even when I'm tired she'll tell me yeah. she'll get on me for real she's done it before like big bro that ain't you bro yeah like you can play better than that you can split a double team you can make that tackle like all right you, you a little sore you know what I'm saying but you still grind yeah you know what I'm saying we was, hey this morning we was right over there we got a workout room we was in there this morning getting yeah. after it like hey like it was after a holiday even on a holiday Grind it. Yeah. Because that's what it's, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's a nonstop thing. And we push each other. And we know it buttons depression, which one's not depressed. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. the thing is, I love what you said. Not being in competition with others, because obviously there's competition. That's one form of competition. Yeah. But the other form of competition that a lot of people forget is the competition within self. Beating yourself. How were you yesterday? And can you surpass where you were today? Yeah. Can you surpass yourself again? And can you keep getting better and better and better every day? And my thing is, that's all we can try to do as humans yeah. is to be the best version of ourselves and be better than where we were the day before. And obviously, you're not going to be the best version of yourself every day. Yeah. 
no. but be the best that you <laughs> but but be the best that you can yeah you feel me and that and that's what i think yeah. is a cool thing about seeing you do all the things that you've done and all the things that i feel like you're honest not even feel that i know yeah. that you're going to continue to do and like i, I said i feel like no at it, it all and that's why i'm so glad you know to be able to like i said you know normally you see an interview with siblings and for me it was just like I mean, I don't know about you. If you're an athlete, you should have goosebumps right now because, I mean, even just hearing you talk, there's stuff that you just mentioned on this podcast I didn't even know about. You know what I'm saying? Some things I, I take away from you that I'm just like, shit. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I'm just like, yo, like, you know, so it's, it's really cool being able to see, like, what molded you what really made you come out of that comfort zone? And you're still working on it. There's still times where I'm like, all right, you know, like, but you if you me? can take anything away from this, like surround yourself. If, if it's not your sibling, yeah. surround yourself with people that see the best in you. Surround mm -hmm. yourself with people that, you know, will push you in your darkest like moments. Like, yeah. And, you know and, and not like, even just see the best in you, yeah. but, also see the worst parts of you yeah. and tell you where you can get better at yeah. in a non-toxic way. Yeah. Because there is some people to be like, oh yeah, I'm not a yes man. But they'll also diss you in your process. And instead of helping you get better, they become your competition yeah. and they not even, you feel me? Watch out for those people. Watch out for that. Cause that's watch real. Out, uh, watch out for the people. Um, I'm very big on energy. Yeah. Um, so definitely watch out for the people that, um, like going going through my experiences, watch out for the people that want to stick around you. Um, but how do I say it? For their own selfish reasons. Yeah. For their, their own, own selfish, selfish reasons. reasons. Yeah. Reasons. Watch out for those people that just want to be around you just so they can get what they want out right. of you. Right. Like if it comes to like mentally, um, just your mindset. Like some people they'll yeah. literally just consume everything you do and then they <laughs> might use it against you. They'll use it against you. So make sure that you have very like Cool people around you, people that you know they're not in it. They're not in it just for to get their, something out of. You don't yeah. want to be transactional. Yeah. You want it to be where okay, let's say yeah. I'm good at marketing. I know that Ari is good at design yeah. and putting stuff out. I'm gonna go okay, Ari. I'm gonna teach you this marketing. Use it in your way. Use it in your own way. Yeah. Don't copy exactly what I'm doing. Use it in your own way to make yeah. your tool better. And I'm gonna use what you teach me to, in my own way to make myself yeah. better. But I'm not gonna do it to become in competition and take your yeah. lane completely over. Or what I'm not gonna do is I'm not gonna take you out of your lane that right. you design because your lane is meant for you. Right. This is my path. If I'm helping and, you to get where you are, like to get where you're going. Don't don't disrespect that person. Right. You know don't disrespect saying? that because person. Because I've definitely had like yeah. you know, like yeah. uh being being in leadership positions, I've definitely had those moments when it's like, hey, like I'm helping you, but then you just take advantage of that or you even disrespect me. Right. So or like it could be anyone. So right. just make sure that you're around people that are genuinely like they want to see you yeah. succeed just as much as they want to succeed themselves. Yeah. I can honestly say just as much as I want to succeed. And because, and like I said, yeah. even if we weren't, I can honestly say if me and you were not brother and sister, genuinely because of the person you are, I think we would have met. And I think I genuinely would have felt the same way. And I think that I would want you to succeed more than I even want to yeah. sometimes, which isn't always, you know, so you want to make sure you succeed. I'm not saying like, no, but I'm just like, don't care about yourself. But I can genuinely say, if you were to get, I, I don't have any jealousy or envy yeah. of what you do exactly. at all. Yeah. And I know that you don't have any jealousy or envy of what I do and what I accomplish. Yeah. Because number one, you don't play football. And number two, you know, I wouldn't, I don't, yeah. even though I can play tennis, it's not my thing, bro. That's you. Like, I can play like you. Yeah. What's up? You feel me? But I don't, that's not me. Yeah. And you know what I'm saying? And I can sing. You can sing. I was just like, yo, my lane producing, bro. And that's what I am. Yeah. And guess what? If she took off tomorrow and got hella rich and famous, she probably would give me money because like, or vice versa, I would give her money because that's just who we are. But I don't expect a dollar. Yeah, just make sure it's all love. Make sure it's all love. Yeah. Make sure it's genuine love. Um, because I can definitely say like being in leadership roles, I love helping people. And I love um, being able to show people like, hey, this is how you can do this. This is how you can do that. Like, Let's, I want to see all my people win. Right. So it's I'm I'm a very humble person. I'm very down to earth. 
Um, so if you didn't know that, you know, feel free to ever talk to me or ask yeah. any of us questions. Yeah, yeah. Um, because I just love to help my community, my community friends <laughs> in any way that I can. So all right. So yeah. with that being said, Aria, where can the people find you on social media? Where can they find you? Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, hit me up on Instagram. I'm on uh Instagram at underscore Aria Celeste. Um, also, I'm on YouTube at subscribe to my channel at official Aria Celeste. Yep. Um, there you will see my music side. And you're gonna post yeah. on more on there, right? I'm gonna post more. Yep. So, yeah, I'm gonna get on there because you're because of me. all of you. So. Right, exactly. And where y'all can find me at is at DZDM3, at DZ yeah. on the track, at DZ Edits. Y'all can find me on all of that stuff, man. Yeah. Here, everything DZ, my other YouTube <laughs> channel, DZ on official DZ on the track. Just drop the Magnum Opus beat tape out right now. Every style that you can think of from Afro beats. I'll put the link in the description. Got the Afro beats, trap beat, Chicago yes. drill, um, Atlanta sound, Bay Area sound, Detroit sound. Everything sound is on It's there. nice, y'all. It's nice. It's nice. You feel me? It's a nice ride, <laughs> too. You feel me? You like it. Yeah. All different speeds, R&B, all that is on there. Seriously. Yeah. Magnum Opus. But without further ado, Aria Celeste. Here on the Everything DZ podcast. So excited I can have you on here. So excited for you to be here. Obviously, you got to get back to Maryland. So, obviously, you already know all the best of love, all the best of will wishes. You already. One time for that one time. She already <laughs> know what time it is, man. Yeah. On the Everything DZ podcast, we out, y'all. Love, blessings, much prosperity. Peace out, y'all. Peace.